So we would like to welcome Mr. Radin Dvorak to represent the Committee of Regions and the Committee. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm not Katatuto, who is a, a COR member, member of the European Committee of the Regions. So it is my pleasure to uh, replace her. Um, I come from the Committee of the Regions, which is a European institution composed of 750 used to be to our members. We like to say that uh, we are the institutional voice uh, of local and regional authorities and our main uh, task is to produce opinions. Uh, opinions are tools or documents that sum up the local and regional expertise and by these opinions we're trying to influence the legislative procedure of the European Commission, Council and Parliament. I would also like to thank my predecessors here, the speakers, um, representatives of the Commission, um, Mr. Kondrup, uh, uh, for giving us a, sort of a broader framework of uh, EU's climate and energy policy. Uh, I would like uh, to concentrate on one small part of this, uh, and that is the implementation uh, on the ground by local and regional authorities. We have heard about the main framework being the Paris Agreement. There is one more thing that I would like to add, and that is that for the first time in the history, uh, such a big and important agreement uh, recognizes the role of subnational actors, uh, cities and regions. Uh, we know that uh, to reach Paris goals, we all need to work, all stakeholders, and the cities and regions are, in our opinion, the best placed uh, to do that for various reasons, which I would like to uh, share with you. Um, first of all, as uh, local and regional leaders, our members, but also other mayors and regional presidents are the most trusted politicians in uh, the European Union. Uh, it is important for many reasons. One of them, just by way of example, is uh, that they are, if they are trusted, they can assert their visions, they can support uh, behavioral change, cultural change that is and will be necessary if, uh, if we are to be successful in meeting Paris goals. Mayors are also the first addressees of problems linked with uh, climate uh, change, like traffic jams, uh, pollution, energy poverty, floods, um, they are usually the ones that are, um, that are called on to solve these issues first. We are facing some problems in city administrations uh, that relate to the nature of uh, the administration political cycles, people come and go, uh, political commitments change, but uh, we must uh, make sure that uh, we adopt measures that are more long-term, exceeding the mandate of a given mayor or government. Uh, we've heard about um, what is going on in the United States with Mr. Trump possibly uh, cancelling the U.S. commitments with the Paris Agreement. I fully agree with Mr. with what Mr. Klaus Kondrup said that no matter what happens, the Paris Agreement is going to be there, and we will make sure that uh, at least at the city level, local and regional level, the targets are pursued. We have several indications from our partners in the United States as the Committee of the Regions that there are many, many big cities that are engaged in climate action and will um, keep their promises 
and will help uh, meet the objectives of the Paris Agreement, regardless of uh, the development at the national level. To give you an example, the COR is uh, developing a partnership with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. We would like to team up, build a coalition of European and American cities in support of the Paris Agreement. And the first uh, opportunity will be this year's COP23 uh, in Bonn, the Conference of Parties. The covenant is now being globalized. After the merge with the Compact of Mayors, we now count over 7,000 signatories and we are currently discussing ways to align both initiatives, emission reporting systems. I actually spent the whole morning in one of uh, those coordination meetings today. We are hoping that the covenant will become, um, or already is, and will continue to be the world's largest coalition of cities and regions engaged in climate action. Now, the big question mark is how China is going to participate in this covenant. We have held previously Talks. discussions on cooperation at city level between the European Union and China on several occasions. We have been part of the EU-China Urbanization Partnership. We are developing individual partnerships between big cities in the EU and China. But the Covenant of Mayors offers a natural framework for that. We know that a regional uh, covenant will be opened in uh, Asia, in Southeast Asia, including China. At least in the European Union, the Covenant of Mayors is a movement that goes from bottom up. It was created by mayors for mayors. The mayors decide uh, on the course of action for the Covenant. We are hoping that it will quickly develop and um, contribute to the success, to the global success of the Covenant. The local and regional actors are the best placed to deal with these issues. And just a few numbers, two-thirds of energy sector investment necessary to meet the EU targets, the EU 2030 energy and climate objectives, will in or in every way require involvement of local actors. Number two, European cities and regions are, actually are significantly more ambitious than their national governments uh, as regards their annual GAG emission reductions. We see that in, especially in the Covenant of Mayors, where the combined commitments exceed the EU goals and there, in the majority of the cases, exceed the national goals. Local investment in the energy sector is affected by regulatory constraints in 80% of member states. So that is, again, an illustration of uh, where um, the main obstacles are. As so, regards uh, messages to take away, I would say that uh, cultural change is primordial. If we look at different models of um, behavioral change that we will need to face regarding car ownership, for example, when, when we talk about carpooling, then we have to rethink the concept of, uh, of ownership as well. We know electric cars are, are very popular, but SUVs still mark the biggest sales. We need leadership. Institutions need to use local levels to, inf to influence uh, the national levels. We would like to see the local plans, local and regional climate and energy action plans for example, drafted in the framework of the Covenant as uh, blueprints, as templates for uh, national energy and climate plans and also exchange of experiences. Thank you for attending. Thank you.